Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the new commander ban list from Magic the Gathering Online. Very strange announcement, but it is about time for Wizard of the Coast to take commander. Now you might want to know a little bit about the brief history of EDH. EDH was made by a bunch of judges and those judges, one in particular today, decide what the ban list is and they are the ones who decided that Hulk should be unbanned and Leovolt should be banned. If that sounds kind of strange to you that Wizards of the Coast is not the one making these decisions, it is. Now add on to it that there is also another ban list called the France 1 vs 1 ban list. You have multiple ban lists going, going around with different cards on each list. It is quite confusing right now. So something has to go. I've always felt that it, Wizards of the Coast would make a grab at the EDH. And you might ask, why does Wizards of the Coast never mention its EDH? They always mention Commander. Right? When in 2013, instead of labeling ED8s, they named it Commander, and those were the Commander Precondex. So it's because they want to own the Commander list. It was only a matter of time before they decided, hey, why are these random people who don't make the product controlling this ban list and having the ability to spike a price? Imagine if you could ban a card. Or more importantly, unban a card. How many hulks would you buy before you announce that it is unbanned? Answer, a lot. And that's why a, having multiple ban lists is confusing as well as it can lead to speculation as well, who knows what's going to be banned. So when the judges are playing against each other, I'm sure they talk about it. I'm sure that it's not just one person whose opinion it is but there is a larger discussion and those people discuss with their friends and their play groups and suddenly a lot of people know that Hulk is going to be unbanned and they buy out the card and then it's unbanned and the card goes up in price. That would be my argument for why Wizards of the Coast should do it. I mean, yes, you could have employees do the same thing, but at least there might be some consequence. Again, I'm not sure what the consequence would be, but maybe there is... You know, people can identify that. So the statement is, and we'll have, we'll pull up the statement soon enough that this is a one versus one ban list, and it doesn't affect the normal ED8 ban list. Again, there is a very very good reason legally that they this person calls it Sheldon calls it ED8, and Magic calls it Commander. It's the same format we're talking about. It's the same exact game, but we have named it two things. So the commander ban list on Magic the Gathering, this is Sheldon's announcement. He's the one who chooses the cards to be banned or unbanned. As the Wizard of the Coast folks mentioned in their announcement, the majority of online play is one versus one. So they scoped their list with that in mind. Our vision maintains that Paper Commander is a multiplayer format, which is how we will continue to manage the banned list. I don't know. I, I believe the time has come to pick one list and stick with it. There's always been this concept of one versus one versus multiplayer. I don't know how many actual players have two different decks, one for the one versus one and one for the multiplayer. I just feel everyone has the same deck. And the ban list has always kind of annoyed me because some cards, uh, most notable, Soul Ring is not on the Seldon ban list, but it is on the Magic Online ban list. There's no better card than Soul Ring. I mean, that is just OP in terms of a turn one play. And you either have your Soul Ring or you do not. So that is turn one for you. And these social factors, I feel like from play group to play group, they will differ and to have someone else's play group facilitate what is banned and what is not banned 
is kind of strange if that is the argument, the argument being, okay, multiplayer and social elements, then yeah, every play group is different. The play groups, my friends, we play every Thursday night, either poker or magic. In our play group, we just run counter spells and everyone runs combo and that's what we enjoy doing. But no one's going to run uh, aggro because they would just beat us down, right? So anyway, I believe this comment where eventually we will have one list will come true. We're not going to have a French list. We're not going to have a Sheldon list. We're not going to have a Magic the Gathering online list. That doesn't make any sense. The main advantage of the Magic the Gathering online list is there's data. If you believe that Wizards of the Coast can collect in two days enough data to ban Feldon Guardian, one of the top tier one decks in standard, it took them two days to collect the data and say, hey, according to this data, 40% of the decks that win are of this type and we have to stop it, so we stopped it. Then, of course, they can, com they can collect and have collected a lot of data on EDH play. Now, is most of the EDH play one versus one? That is correct. However, that can change and that needs to change for Magic Digital Next. Magic Digital Next, again, we haven't really talked about that. I was hoping in DreamHack Austin where they made a lot of different announcements and you know it's kind of an e-sporty type of deal. They would announce something along the lines of, oh, hey guys, we are going to do this. Uh, even in Magic Duels, you can do two head command, uh, two, two head giant. And that's kind of fun. It, it, does it does take a ton of time though. Like, I, it's, man, like, <laughs> it was, I think the last time I played it, it took like two hours of like, what's going on? Like, no, just kill him, just kill him. Because you can't control your opponent and your opponent is kind of random. Or you can't con control your teammate and your teammate, just, I, the teammate I was on just took a long time. So here are other things that are banned. This is their ban list. I fully agree with it. You have the um, Sarah's Ascendant is just the perfect one drop. I believe it's the one white for the 6-6 six, six, six lifelink and it just goes to town and you really can't do anything about it. And you can see a lot of these cards that are banned are on the reserve list. Moat, uh, Tabernacle, Recall, All Power 9 I believe is on this list. And then here are the oppressive commanders. Uh, but, and then they banned them. Um, they kind of make sense. I do wish that Eldrick would be unbanned, but Eldrick is very good. Grizzlebrand is also very good. So what happened was Wizard of the Coast made their own ban list for Commander. I, so, I truly believe that eventually this will be the accepted ban list because Wizard of the Coast will make a ban and restriction announcement. And it will just be one now. And right now, it's so strange, right? You have Wizard of the Coast making an announcement, and then you have Sheldon making an announcement, and then you have the French one versus one making an announcement. And it's like, mm, we have three different announcements for the fo same format. At the very least, French one versus one is pretty much their ban list, and who's controlling their ban list is probably going to go away uh, sooner than later. And then eventually Sheldon's ban list will likely go away. I mean, if you guys have good arguments of why we should go with Sheldon's ban list, I would love to hear them. But at the end of the day, Wizards of the Coast makes a card game. And that is very scary. So if I were if I were in charge of the ban list, I would be extremely careful. Because every time you unban something, every time you ban something, as you can see, Leovault is not here. Why might Leovault not be on a Magic the Gathering online ban list? And why is he banned in the Sheldon ban list when Leovault is so strong in 1 verse 1? The answer may have to deal with what Wizard of the Coast wants to sell. There is a money aspect of this. Let's say, okay, Amaket has an amazing commander and then Sheldon bans it. They're going to sell less armor cat packs to casual players, especially the commander players. And let's say that for whatever reason, Wizard of the Coast wants to push Conspiracy to take the crown because they got to get rid of supply. Well, banning Leovolt is not necessarily going to help that because then casual players are not going to open Conspiracy. 
that is too much power in a third party on your finances. And that's not something that a stockholder wants to hear. A stockholder is not going to be like, okay, so we have this really popular format and we don't control it, all aspects of it. Get control. That is exactly what the CEO of Microsoft would want to do. That is exactly what the CEO of Hasbro was probably telling the CEO, Chris Cox of Wizards of the Coast. Get your act together, make one ban list, and go for it. And it doesn't matter how slow it takes for acceptance, just get acceptance. That way we can sell more product. And it's a very pessimistic view, but everything that Wizards of the Coast has done for a while has been to drive the end of the year sales. We have two master sets this year, Iconic and Modern Masters. Modern Masters had probably the best reprints. I mean, wow, Fetchlands, Damnation, Goblin Guide, Inquisition at Uncommon, the Uncommon's Might of Crosa Uncommon. The Uncommon's were fantastic by themselves. Then you get really, really good Mythics. You get Snap, you get Lily. Most people were just going to be happy with Snap and Lily, but they blew that out. And then Eternal Masters, the double printing of Eternal Masters. This is not the same Wizards of the Coast before Chris Cox, post Chris Cox. So at the end of the day, there is some speculation that can be done. And that's my main takeaway. If you understand what I'm saying, you can compare the two lists and some of the cards are unbanned and they are interesting because if people play on Magic Online, people want to play on paper. And that's what I, my, that's my main argument with shout on is that Magic Online A has more data and B, it will influence what people want to play. And his sample size is much smaller and his play group is much smaller than Wizard of Coast Magic Online. So anyway, leave me a comment. Let me know which uh, which ban and restriction list you like best. And if you agree with Wizard of Coast doing this. Anyway, bye guys.